is Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology, Module 4, Video Clip 4.1. Today we'll be looking at personality, some theories, and thoughts. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Describe the historical frameworks and theories for thinking about personality. What elements of humanistic psychology are significant for online learners? Do you believe personality traits are static and unchanging? And how would you rank yourself with the big five traits? The phenomenon of personality. To begin this video clip, think to yourself how you would define the term personality. What are the influences that have shaped your personality? Brainstorm a list of all the influences that have shaped who you are today. These could be cultural, educational, familial. Rank these elements that have been most important to least important in the development of your personality. Was there an age at which you knew who you were? And has your personality changed over the years? Or are there elements that you see in yourself that have stayed the same? How powerful is technology in shaping the development of people's personalities in this digital generation? We will be sharing our lists in tutorial this week. Let's take a look at four historically significant perspectives established in the field of personality psychology. Psychoanalytic theory by Sigmund Freud, the humanistic approach which was Abraham Maslow, trait theory which was Gordon Alpert and several other theorists, and finally social learning with Albert Bandura. Sigmund Freud explored the unconscious and he thought that hypnosis might unlock the door to the unconscious mind. He used something he called free association, a method of exploring the unconscious in which the person relaxes and says whatever comes to mind. And he called his theory psychoanalysis. Freud's theory of personality included the following elements. The id, which has a reservoir of psychic energy and satisfies basic urges and desires. The ego, that operates on the reality principle and gratifies the id's impulses in more realistic ways. And finally, the superego, our conscience, which forces the ego to consider how one ought to behave according to social norms. Freud said that the child identifies their personality with the same sex parent and relates threatening ideals to the rival sex parent. He believed that children go through a series of psychosexual stages where the id's pleasure-seeking principles dominate. And he talked about the development of defense mechanisms and said, anxiety is the price we pay for civilization. Remember, though, Freud did not live in a digital age where the pace of civilization is quite phenomenal. In terms of our development as humans, he did identify some behaviors that we do as our personalities develop. Repression, which means we banish our bad emotions to the subconscious. Regression, meaning we retreat to a previous stage of development. And reaction formation, where the ego makes unacceptable impulses of the id seem like the opposite. Let's move on to a more positive framework, the humanistic perspective with Abraham Maslow, who you might remember from the hierarchy of needs in our motivation section. Maslow talked about self-actualization as the highest order of being. We strive for self-esteem and then self-actualization. And Maslow developed his ideas by studying creative, healthy people, such as Lincoln, Jefferson, and Eleanor Roosevelt, in contrast to Freud, who studied neurotic and sick people. Another theorist uh, is Carl Rogers, who followed Maslow and talked about person-centered perspectives in humanistic psychology. So he tended to use terms like unconditional positive regard and positive self-concept. So if the self-concept is positive, then we tend to influence the world in positive ways. So can you suggest some implications of this for professions like nursing, medicine, education? Moving on to trait theory with Gordon Allport. Traits tend to be people's characteristic behaviors and conscious motives. This theory assumes that traits are enduring, stable attributes or characteristics of a person and defines broad personality types such as introverts or extroverts. The Myers-Briggs Personality Inventory from the late 80s is a tool that analyzes these personality traits. And the most widely researched and clinically used of all personality tests is the MMPI the Minnesota Multiple Personality Inventory. But more research since the 90s has focused on what we call the Big Five Personality Traits, and these are emotional stability, extroversion, openness, 
agreeableness, and conscientiousness. Some questions to consider here. How stable are these traits? Well, in adulthood, they're generally quite stable. How heritable are these traits? In general, our personality traits are about 50% inherited. And how well do they apply to other cultures? There's a fairly reasonable comparison between cultures for the big five traits. Let's move on to social learning theory. Albert Benjura examined the reciprocal influences of our society on how our personalities develop, and he called the process of us interacting with our environment reciprocal determinism. For example, different people choose different environments, our personalities shape how we interpret and react to events, and our personalities then help create the situations to which we react. This theory is based on three steps. First, your behavior. Second, the environment in which you behave. And third, self-efficacy, or your belief about your ability to perform the behaviors required to achieve the outcomes you want. Let's think of the applications of this social learning theory in an online community or a digital learning environment. How would Bandura's social learning theory apply to what you're doing now? Has the digital environment shaped your view of yourself? Do we see reciprocal determinism in Adobe Connect? For example, your behavior in this class, watching videos, talking in tutorial, or self-study activities. Second, your digital environment. Are you in isolation or having possible distractions at home? Is it synchronous or asynchronous? And third, your skills in technology and your belief in those skills, or your level of self-efficacy. In addition to these four major schools of personality development, we can also examine how people perceive their locus of control. An external locus of control is the perception that chance or outside forces determines our fate. An internal locus of control is the belief that to a great extent people control their own destiny. Depending on whether we have an external or an internal locus of control, a few other attitudes can develop in our personalities. Learned helplessness is when people or animals experience no control over the repeated bad events they have, and so they end up learning to be helpless. Opposite to this is optimism, where health benefits can result from an optimistic outlook with a realistic perspective. Self-esteem, and high self-esteem in particular, self-worth, pays very big dividends in health. People who feel good about themselves have fewer sleepless nights, can form less to pressure, are less shy and lonely, and are generally happier. Can you see applications of these terms for digital learning environments? So how has technology affected our ways of approaching things individually or as a group? There exists a continuum of ways to look at learning and the world in general, from individualism to collectivism. So individualism meaning we give priority to our own goals over the group goals, and we define our identity in terms of our personality and personal attributes rather than collectivism where we give priority to the group goals and our extended family or work group helps to define our identity. Let's reflect. Does the digital environment shape us to be more individualistic or more collective in our approach to the world? Before answering, consider the following. In the age of Freud, global communication was slow. Now we have instantaneous access to information from all over the world at all times. So. Has this made our personalities more optimistic or pessimistic? Has it made us more individualistic or more socially aware and responsive? Has it made us more selfish and has it increased the gaps between the haves and have nots? Here are the synthesis questions for this video. Has the prevalence of technology had an influence on the development of individuals' personalities? Would you consider technology aptitude a personality trait, or is that something that can be learned? How do online communities foster or create barriers to sharing our real personalities? And is your online personality different than your everyday one? In what ways does technology allow us to be or do things differently than we would in a face-to-face -face situation? I look forward to hearing your thoughts and tutorials.